Targets at platform three. All units, take your positions. He's getting in a grey car. Move now, move. He's gonna get away, close the gate. Okay, let's talk about how I made this James Bond style action chase scene in Blender. We'll be covering lots of cool stuff in this video like character animation, car animation and environment building. This video has been sponsored by Concept D, a new brand by Acer. They've sent me this Concept D7 Spatial Labs Edition laptop to make the animation. It's got a really unique glasses free 3D screen and loads of other cool features. We'll talk more about that later in the video but for now let's just get started. Before we cover the actual car chase, let's just quickly cover how I made the opening establishing shots in the train station. All of the main characters for this animation were created using a Blender add-on called Human Generator, which I'll link to in the description. It's got a pretty self-explanatory interface and it makes life a lot easier if you're trying to make fairly realistic characters. Human Generator characters come with a pre-made rig which you can use to animate, but I actually got all of the animations from Adobe's Mixmo website. If you've never used Mixamo before, it's a library of mocap data that you can apply to your characters and it even has this nice auto rigging feature so you can just import your character mesh and you can download it with an animation. Sometimes it looks great, sometimes not so much, but it's certainly a lot easier than having to animate every shot by hand. The train station platform was built by me from scratch as was the car park. The actual train carriages and the station building in the background were made by other people. I downloaded those from Sketchfab. To make the shot of the train pulling into the station, I just parented all the carriages to one empty object and then I could just keyframe the location of that empty so that it would pull into the station. To finish off the shot, I went back to Mixmo and I downloaded a few characters in sitting idle poses. Keep all the characters sat in their seats on the train. I just had to parent the armature of each one of the characters to that original empty that I made to control the location of the train. Then wherever the train goes, those characters will follow even though they're animated. Finally for the train, I just went into the curve editor and I added a noise modifier to the train's parent so that the train would kind of shake and jostle a little bit as it pulls up. So now we get to the fun part, the actual car chase. The cars that I used were from the traffic add-on, though you can get some very nice cars online for free on sites such as Sketchfab and Blendswap. To animate the cars, I originally bought an add-on called Car Rig Pro, but frankly after about two days of playing with that thing, I just couldn't get it to work properly. Which is a real shame because it actually looks like quite a cool add-on. It automatically calculates physics for things like braking and drifting but I just ran into all sorts of problems with that. So my plan B was to use this free add-on called Rigger Car. This add-on doesn't calculate most of the car movement other than the wheels, but it's really simple to use. You just parent the armature to the different parts of the car, and then you set a curve for the path of the car, and you select the mesh that you want to be the ground, and the wheels will automatically stick to it. Then you can just manually animate the chassis of the car as it drifts and rolls around the corners and all of the movement of the car and the wheels are calculated for you. I found out in the middle of this that the newer version of the traffic add-on actually includes the rigger car armatures on all the vehicles automatically which saved me a little bit of time because I didn't have to rig all the cars. 
The little gun that pops out the side of the car was actually really easy to do. I just cut a hole in the side of the car mesh and I made this really quick and dirty gun object. It's got this little mechanical arm so that it moves out into position. There's no fancy rigging here or anything like that. I just used a few constraints to make sure that each one of the parts would only move or rotate in the way that I wanted it to. So when it's time for the gun to appear, the keyframe is set on this panel opening. Then there's another keyframe to extend the arm and there's a rotation keyframe on the gun so that I'll rotate into position. There's actually a mistake on some of the shots where the gun is just pointing out the side of the car for some reason. I don't really know how that happened, but I only noticed it when I watched the animation like for the 10th time or something. So it wasn't worth re-rendering all those shots. One of my favorite shots was the guy in the security room and it was actually one of the fastest and easiest shots to create. I just added a plane for the wall and for the floor, then I used this Mixamore character with the animation that I downloaded from there for the guy. There's a few cubes on the wall to be monitors, and there's one or two random objects I downloaded for control panels and things like that. To make the images for the camera feed, I knew that I would need loads of different renders of the car park. The easiest way to do that was just move around the car park with a camera and set a new location keyframe for every spot on each frame. Then I just had to render out a whole sequence of these frames and I could leave my computer and it would go around all these different locations and render out each shot. I didn't have to manually save each render and move into a new place, save each one. It just did it all for me. To make the radio stick to the hand of the security guy when he lifts his arm up, I just used a constraint. I just linked the radio mesh to the bone that's inside his arm, and then wherever he moved his hand, the radio would go with it. Why is he using a radio when he's obviously wearing an earpiece? I don't know, but you can't actually see that in the render, so it doesn't matter. I didn't actually notice the earpiece until I viewed the mesh with the Spade to Labs 3D mode enabled. It has this really cool feature where it'll track your eyes as you move around the screen. So not only do you get a stereoscopic 3D experience, but the model actually moves around to match your perspective in real time. Basically, it feels like you've got this window into a 3D world and you can actually kind of walk around or look around the objects and you can see them from different perspectives. It's very cool. So finally for this shot, to make everything look a little bit more dramatic, I just stuck a light behind the desk shining up on the wall, and then I put another area light just behind the guy, just above him. I reduced the beam size a little bit on the area light, which kind of turns it into a makeshift spotlight. It's a really good way to add some separation between foreground and background elements. Here's a cool little trick for lighting dark scenes. A black background obviously looks very boring, especially when most of the objects are shiny reflective cars. But if we use a HDRI to light the scene instead, we'll see the actual HDRI image in the background, which is not what we want. So we can get the best of both worlds here by going into the World Shader Editor and mixing a base color with the HDRI. We can add the Light Path node and use Is Camera Ray as the mix factor. What that'll do is it'll make the sky appear to just be this plain black background, but we'll get all the lighting and the reflections of the HDR image. One problem that I found with this is that any glass in the scene will show a refracted or a reflected version of the HDRI image, not the sky background. You can see that here in this test render inside the car seems to be a lot brighter than the environment would imply. I fixed that issue really simply just by swapping out the glass for a tinted glass shader whenever that effect was visible. I'm sure there's probably a much better solution using nodes. No doubt someone in the comments will let me know if there is. So all of your shots will look much more dynamic if you add some sort of secondary movement to the camera. You can add some camera shake just by adding a noise modifier to the position of the camera's location but I like to use Ian Hubert's Shakeify add-on instead. It gives you a lot of control over the type of camera shake that it gives you, and I use it in most of my projects these days. Like everything else, I'll leave a link to that in the description. The forest road environment was really easy to make. In fact, every single shot from the car park to the final scene was created in about two days. First, you just need to create a plane which will act as the road surface and a curve which we'll use to define its shape. Add an array modifier to the plane and set the type to curve, then select the curve object. Now you've got a road which will match the length of the curve. 
To make the road follow the shape of the curve, we just need to add in a curve modifier and select the curve object again. Make sure that the road mesh has a few loop cuts, otherwise it won't deform properly when it goes around a bend. Now you can just extend out the curve and the road will match the shape and the length of the curve. Add another plane to the side of the road and that will make you some surroundings. You can give that plane the same modifier as the road and it will also match the shape of the curve. Then you can just add a particle system onto that object to create some grass or some trees. But you will have to apply the array modifier first otherwise the particles will only be applied to one of these meshes. This Concept D7 Spirit Labs edition that I'm using has an 11th generation Intel CPU so it has plenty of processing power which means it can handle really complex scenes. But it's always a good practice to reduce your poly count as much as possible to keep things nice and smooth and to reduce your render times. So to get around the problem of having lots of high polygon trees I just took a render of a single tree with a transparent background and I added that onto a plane. Then if you just duplicate that mesh a couple of times and you rotate it around the center point, you get a really decent looking tree from a distance that doesn't have too many polygons. Just make sure that you go into the light bounce settings and increase the amount of transparent bounces, otherwise all the trees in the background will have this sort of black square around them. The original plan for this animation was for the cars to enter the forest road, then they would pass through this busy urban street, dodging the traffic and things, and finally they would end up at that tunnel at the end. Obviously I scrapped the city sequence because I realised halfway through it was just going to be way too ambitious. I created 22 shots in a week for this project, and the city section was probably going to add another 10-15 to 15 shots. So I just scrapped that part, but I did manage to build the city location before I realised it was just going to be too much work for the time. Building the city section was fairly easy because I used a lot of photo scans and models that I downloaded from the internet. Now unfortunately when you download stuff online the quality can vary massively. Some scans and models look alright when you download them, but when you actually open them up in Blender they're really not very good. So normally what I have to do is download every one of them and then I import them all into Blender one by one, wait for all the textures and things to load and I can figure out if they're good or not. Since I've got this Concept D7 Spatial Labs Edition laptop, I decided to use its inbuilt model viewer instead to check the quality of all the models. I really like this tool because it's very stable even with high resolution meshes and it made it really easy for me to sort through all the scans and meshes that I downloaded for this project. So even though that city sequence was cut, there's still one or two useful tips that I found during its creation that I think are worth mentioning. First, I found out about this really cool little add-on called Geo Cables that adds geometry node cables to your shots. Hanging cables are a really great way to add a little bit of life and visual interest into the scene, and this add-on makes it really easy to do. You just click on points where you want the cables to join up, and then you get a bunch of parameters that you can alter how they look, like how many cables there are and how much they sag. Secondly, the other thing I found is that when you're making racing shots, it's really the best idea to stick to a low focal length. This animated camera is travelling at a constant speed, but you can see that it appears to be travelling much faster when the camera focal length is small, and when you put it up high, the camera looks like it's going slow as hell. Now, some of the shots in this forest sequence especially looked either way too slow or way too fast. It would have been a real pain to change the speed of all the keyframes since all the car physics and everything was already baked into the animation. Luckily, Blender has a feature that you can use to remap time. If you open up this section called Time Stretching, you can just alter the new number. It's based on a factor of 100 for the old animation. So for instance, if you put 200 in as the new number, the animation will play at half speed, and if you put 50 in as the new number, it'll play twice as fast. So now we're into the final stretch and probably my favourite part of the whole animation, the tunnel sequence. You might not have noticed it, but when the first car comes in and does that three point turn, it actually disturbs some leaves on the ground. These were really easy to do, I just created a plane with a leaf texture and I gave that a cloth simulation. The ground was given a collision property and then the leaf was duplicated a bunch of times. I set the friction and the damping really high on the ground collision mesh so that the leaves would just settle into place as soon as they touched the ground. 
To make the leaves actually get kicked up by the wind, I just added a turbulence force effect near the leaves and I keyframed the strength so that the turbulence would only activate on the leaves whenever the car was near the leaves. The missile launcher was a lot of fun and it's definitely one of my favourite shots. I just keyframed the location of the missile so it would fly across the screen and I parented a point light to the base of the missile so that it would light up the car as it fired away. To make the smoke I just added a sphere to the end of the rocket and I parented that to the mesh as well and then I used the quick smoke preset to simulate some smoke. If you're trying to add smoke to a really fast moving object like this, you're going to want to go into the domain settings and crank up all the numbers to deal with things like sub steps and all the calculations in between frames. Otherwise if you don't do that you won't get this nice trail of smoke, you'll just get kind of blobs of smoke on every other frame or something and it'll look terrible. So the compositing and some other colour correction for this sequence was done in DaVinci Resolve. This Concept D7 Spatial Labs Edition is great for colour correction because it has a really beautiful screen. It's Pantone validated and it uses Adobe RGB colour gamut, which basically means that it displays a much wider range of tones compared to standard sRGB. So colour balancing all these shots was a real breeze. In the Blender Compositor I also added a little bit of lens distortion to most of the shots and I tweaked the colour values a little bit with the colour balance node. Let me know what you thought of this video in the comments and don't forget to hit subscribe if you haven't already. I want to say a special thank you to Concept D for making this video possible. Check out the link in the description to see more information about the Concept D7 Spatial Labs Edition. I'll catch you guys in a few days with another video.